if you're using buttons in custom editors in your inspector and you're doing this on the regular, this may be the video that takes your Unity toolset to the next level. So in this video, I will introduce you to overlays and I expect by the end, you'll want more example videos on this subject. So make sure to like, subscribe and comment on what tools you want to see as overlays in your scene views. Now, if you've been using one of the latest versions of Unity, basically from 2021 onwards, you might have been using overlays and not even realized it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the functionality you get from overlays, and then we'll move on to scripting some of our own. Now we have our scene view and we can look at our first panel, which is our tools panel. And you might have noticed this pop up after you left 2020 and came into 2021. And this actually just used to be a set of buttons that were on one of the toolbars. But now with a panel, we can actually select where we want this placed in our scene view. We can dock it up the top, we can dock it down the bottom or to any of the sides, and we can also shrink it. We can actually collapse it and have it collapse dock, and then you can expand out. And that's some of the power of having panels. And you might think, oh, well, you know, why do I want this? Well, all your designers, all your artists are gonna work in different ways. And having these things docked to the side it's incredibly useful. And if you look at tools like Maya and Blender and stuff, these toolbars are very adjustable to the preference of the user. And that's why they've got a lot more power. Now, if you look at some of my old videos, you will see some of these legacy sort of windows that hover over in the scene and they weren't draggable. They were just placed in the scene as tools to be used. Whereas now I'm moving a lot of my tool set over to these panels and overlays so that I can have the artist or designer suit their own needs. But let's say we don't actually want one of the panels up. Well, in Unity, you can actually press the space bar when you're on the scene view and you actually get the options for all the various panels and you can see them highlight as I roll down. So let's say I don't want the tools because you know I'm a power user, I use shortcuts. I can actually just switch them off and now they're gone. Or if I press the space bar again, I can switch them back on and now they're back. Let's jump into what you came here for and that's the coding side of things. Let's create our own toolbar overlay that's going to display in our scene. So we've got our editor folder, we've got our toolbars folder, and now I'm going to create a C sharp script and I'm going to call this space toolbar. And the reason I'm going to call it space is because if I jump into one of my scenes, we've actually got a little space scene set up here and I can pop into the game view. And as you can see, here it is. This is our space scene. And I want to add some asteroids in here and I want the ability to add them and clear them out of the scene. So I'm going to create a space toolbar that's actually going to enable me to do that. So let's jump back into our scene view. We've got our code. Let's jump into Visual Studio. Now, this won't be a mono behavior, so we can get rid of the stuff that comes for that class. Now, this class itself is going to derive from the toolbar overlay class, which we'll get from Unity Editor Overlays. And we want to specify to Unity that this is an overlay. So we'll put in the attribute of overlay. And we also want to say what editor views we're actually interested in. And in this case, I'm interested in the scene view, which comes from the Unity Editor library. And we also want to give this a name. I'm going to give it space tools because I'm going to have a space bar with, I'm going to have a toolbar with all these different tools that I can actually use. Now, you would have seen when I was using the tools panel earlier that when I collapsed it, it actually collapsed back to a little spanner and screwdriver icon. Well, to do that, we can actually specify an icon here. And this has to be an exact path to where an icon appears in your directory, in your project directory. And in this case, I've already set one up at assets, editor, tool icons slash space icon.png. There we go. So now if I save and I come back into Unity, now if I press space in my scene view, you'll see space tools has come up as an option. And if I press on that, I get a little pop up here. And as you can see, that's the icon I set up earlier and it's all there, but there's nothing that's going to pop out yet because we actually haven't added any buttons to this space tools. 
So in Visual Studio, let's start adding some buttons. But before we do, I wanted to note one thing. At the moment, this derives from toolbar overlay, but you can actually just derive from overlay. And if you were creating something like a little joystick that you can move in one of these overlays, then you might want to do that because you can actually specify the content directly in there rather than creating buttons or other items to put in your toolbar. And if you're interested in that, I'm going to show an example at the end. And if you comment enough, I'll actually show you how to build one of those where you just derive from the overlay itself. But getting back to our space toolbar. Now let's add a button to our toolbar because otherwise it's pretty useless. So we'll come in and we'll say, this is add asteroid button. And this is going to derive from the, oh, the editor toolbar button. There we go. And now you need to tell Unity that this is an editor toolbar element that's going to be in our overlay. So we'll come in and we'll say it's a toolbar element and you'll give this an ID. Now you could just write the string straight in here, but we're actually going to be using it elsewhere as well. So I'm going to make a public const because we're not going to change this ID because that would be ridiculous. And you're going to give it a unique name. And in this case, I'm going to call it space tools slash add. There we go. And we can just call it add because it's within the context of our space tools. And we'll put ID up here now. So that's got its unique ID. We also, as we did with the overlay, need to specify which views this is going to appear in. And in this case, yes, it's still the scene view. Now let's create a constructor for this particular button. Now in our constructor, we'll set up various um, properties of our button itself, like the text that will appear or the icon and the tooltips, because you should be adding tooltips. If you've seen my videos, I like tooltips. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some text that will appear. And in this case, we're just going to write in add. Now this text appears if you actually set your overlay into panel mode. I've already shown you the vertical and horizontal one. I'll show you the panel mode in a minute, but this basically puts the text right next to your actual icon. And we can just use add here. We don't need to put in any more because it appears in our space toolbar. Therefore, it's already got context to the user. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it an icon. And this icon will be in the same location. I've already added an icon in there. And rather than actually having this really nice icon attribute, we're going to get this from the asset database. And we're going to do load asset at path. There we go. And this asset is going to be a texture 2D that we're actually interested in. And now we're going to put in the path but we're going to use the same sort of path as up here. So what we can do is we can actually just pull this down, come into here, give it a constant string and say icon path. And then in here, that'll be the path to our icons. You can copy, put this back, clean this up. There we go. And now we can use our icon path here and just add on to the end of it the fact that we've got the name, which is asteroids. This means that if we ever change our icon path, we're actually just changing it in this one constant, not going through and finding everywhere we use it. So that's our icon. The next thing we want to do is we want to give it a tooltip because you should always give tooltips. So add asteroids to scene. Oh, and we'll put a space in there so it makes sense. Now, we now want to specify what happens when you press this button. And we'll be creating a function called void on click. And it doesn't matter what the name is, but you know, make it contextual. And we're going to say that when this is clicked, the callback is on click. There we go. Now I've already got some tools from my asteroids, which is asteroid generator. And in here, I'm just going to use the function I have for creating an asteroid field. Now, obviously your own buttons, you would do whatever. You might just be printing something out. You might be adding trees. You might be dropping trees onto the floor, etc. Do whatever you want in your particular click. So let's save that. And now we want to basically add it to our space toolbar. So we're going to create a constructor for our space toolbar. And 
we're going to send the fact that we're using this new button. So we're going to add this new button and then we'll just close out there. Oh, and we spelled that wrong. There we go. So what we're doing there is we're actually sending to the base, the, the toolbar overlay class, that this is a button we want to add when we're constructing our toolbar. So we'll save and now we'll come back into Unity. So now in Unity, we actually have it collapsed at the moment, but what I can do is I can expand it and now you can see I've got the add there. And this is with the toolbar in its panel mode. And I can actually put that back down into vertical. And as you can see, I've got a little crashing asteroid icon. And if I press this icon, it performs the function on that on click. And in this case, it's created this asteroid field that we can see in our game view now. Now, obviously, as before, we might want to have this docked up the very top. So now we've got our space toolbars coming up there and we can add extras. Now let's add one last quick button into that actual code. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and we're going to paste this down and we're going to change this out for a delete button. So we'll just copy the delete text there for the unique identifier, constructor, text, tooltip, the icon. And obviously we want to change the onClick function. And in this case, I've got delete asteroids. So now all we need to do is we need to add this onto the end here delete asteroid button, and we'll just provide the ID. And this ID, obviously, we'll just look up whatever has been pasted into here. Okay, so in Unity, we'll jump back in, and what we'll see on our toolbar that we've docked is we'll have another little object, another little button turn up, and this is the delete asteroids from scene. And there you go, you can see it just deletes straight away. And I can pull this down again, I can create my asteroids, and I can delete them. And that there is a quick toolbar overlay that will save me time when offering these space scenes. But I also have an overlay for when I'm working with paths for adding, deleting and inserting points. Or for a more complex example, here we can see a joystick that controls the pitch and yaw on this virtual pilot seat simulator. Now this actual example is how I test my mech motion simulator movement that I would usually get from a mounted controller without having to get into the simulator every time to use it. More videos on the motion simulator coming in the near future, so make sure you're subscribed. So let me know what sort of tools you would add to an overlay for your project, or if you want me to cover any extras on this topic in the future. And trust me, overlays will feature in many of my future videos. Now that's it for now, but before you click off to the next video, hopefully one in this series and not just another puppy video, if you're getting something from these videos, then you can give a little back by joining in with the comments, making sure to subscribe, telling other developers about this channel, or even just at the minimum, liking this video. The bigger this channel grows, the more time I can spend on it. And as always, thanks for watching.